Namaste, welcome. We're going to get started in this strength and focus practice by standing up. And we're gonna do a centering here. A centering is just a way for us to focus our energy from whatever we were doing before. And I always like to start any yoga practice with a centering because yoga is all about being mindful and mindful in our movements, mindful in our actions and mindful with our breath. So we're gonna just start by bringing our feet hip distance apart and bring our hands by our sides. And we're just gonna close our eyes. We're gonna take a deep breath in as if we're breathing all the way up from our feet, all the way up to the crown of the head. And then as we exhale, we're gonna sigh it out through our mouth. We're going to do that two more times. Inhale. <sighs> Feel your shoulders dropping down. Any stress or tension in your muscles are leaving you now. And last time. <sighs> Good. Gently open your eyes. And we are going to continue on with something called joint mobilizations. So joint mobilizations are sort of like a yogic way of warming up the body, just like we do when we do any other sport. So we're going to start with uh, our necks, actually. So we're going to inhale and look up. And then exhale and bring your chin towards your chest. So we're kind of moving with the breath. Inhaling up, exhaling down. And we're trying to keep our shoulders down away from our ears. So I always like to like imagine I'm holding like two heavy shopping bags. So the shoulders are coming down and we can really stretch through the front and back of the neck. Okay. Something else to think about is if your jaw is tensing up, you can try to relax your jaw here. Good, now come back to neutral and then you're just gonna look side to side. So you're gonna look one way and then the other without turning your shoulders or your hips. Very good. And I tend to close my eyes when I practice. You could kind of just check in, see what we're doing and then also close your eyes if you want to sort of sense how you're feeling while you're practicing. And this is the way we really get to know our bodies a little bit more. Awesome. Come back through the center. Now, again, imagine those heavy shopping bags. You're holding them. Your shoulders are coming down. You're going to drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. And that left shoulder is drawing away. Now, you can kind of flick your hand, your fingers up and kind of push your left hand away. So the right hand can just be normal. Left hand kind of push away. You can feel that right into this upper trap and this muscle called sternocleidomastoid in your neck. Good. Come back through the center and then go ahead and do that on the other side. Good. I can hear Kevin breathing. So nice. I think athletes are really great at already being very connected to your breath. So we're really mindfully trying to keep that breath steady and flowing throughout our practice. Good. And then come back through the center. Now I just want you to get loose, kind of shake it up. Okay. Soften through your knees. Okay. And then we're going to take our hands in front of us like we're, we're making like a stop. Like stop. Okay, so when we do that stopping movement, we're actually going to, you can stay where you are, but around the back, okay, and then you're going to open up, so you're going to lift your arms up, and then open your chest and kind of arch your back, so you can straighten your legs, and then bend your legs again, sweep your arms forward, rounding, inhaling, opening, and squeezing the shoulder blades together. So just keep doing these big circles. We're really warming up the upper body as we do this. So you feel your shoulder blades coming together as you open your arms and moving away from one another as you push forward. Good, let's do one more big circle. And then next time as we come up with straight legs, we're gonna interlace the fingers and just push straight up. So this time you're stretching through your wrists and through the whole body really. You can feel yourself rooting down through your legs and finding lots of length and space here in the whole body. Keep breathing. 
<laughs> don't hold your breath. Good. And then from here, take your hands down to your hips. Okay, so again, you might even walk out a little wider. We're going to start doing some big circles here. So you can imagine yourself sort of hula hooping. Good job. So one thing we're going to look for is that we're keeping the upper body still and we're moving just at the hips, which makes it a little bit harder. But try to feel that upper body nice and still and we're moving just at the waist. Okay. Good. And this is a good time to sort of check in with our low backs, our hips, how we're feeling here. Good. And then let's go the other direction. Good job. How are you feeling? Good. Good. So this is a really great way to sort of tune in with your body as well. So notice we kind of gone from head and we're going to move down towards our feet. So we kind of see at every level of each joint what, how we're feeling. Okay. Standing up tall. This one you might need a friend. So we'll start using a friend. You're just going to yep. hold my hand. Yep. Okay. Here we can reach. And we're going to use our outer legs. And we're going to lift up, out, around and down. So it's kind of a balance. You're going up, out, around, down. Keep going. Now, if you want more of a challenge, you can do it on your own. Good. Okay, and we're warming up that ball and socket joint, our hip joint. Good. And now let's go the other way around. So I always tell my students it's like walking over a giant snowbank in the winter time. Good. And I hear some cracking and popping, which is totally normal. It is your ligaments uh, and tendons that cross over that joint. Okay, so a lot of my students will say the popcorn pose because they hear pop, pop, pop. Okay, nothing wrong is happening. Our bodies are meant to make that sound when we do this big circle. Okay, let's land it. And since we were so good, we didn't even need help. We can just go on the other side. Okay, but if you need a wall at home, if you're feeling like you're losing your balance, just go ahead and find that support you need. Good, and anytime we're balancing, it's really a good idea to focus on something that's not moving and stare at that same place. Other way around. Five, four, three, two, and one. And then let's just kind of march it out. Okay. Awesome. The last thing we're going to do is a little stretch for our ankles. So we're going to actually take one foot forward and bend the knee. And we're going to stretch and bring the knee over the toes. Now, I rarely say this. You might even come down on your back knee into a lunge. Usually I say the knee should never go over the ankle unless we're doing this one stretch, OK? So you can even hold down that back heel towards the floor and push the knee forward. And this helps with our dorsiflexion. And I played many years of hockey and my ankles were really, really tight because you're in that, that skate, which is really hard structures. It's really hard to bring that knee forward. So I would just stay and hold it now after you've moved it around a couple times as much as you can and it's really going to stretch your Achilles tendon and something called the soleus which is like our deepest calf uh, muscle. Uh, let's release that and try the other side and see how this side is. And one side might be completely different than the other. So you may move it a few times like Kevin's doing and then you might find that little sweet spot and we're going to try to hold it. We're going to make sure the knee's not drawing in towards the big toe. We're just trying to track it straight forward and breathe. <laughs> Good job. And then let's come back up to stand near the top of our mat. We're going to do something now called Surya Namaskar or sun salutations. And this is really sort of a dynamic warm up. You'll want to be more at the top of your mat because you're really tall and you're going to be lunging back. You won't hit me. It's okay. <laughs> so we'll bring hands to our hearts. 
And we're gonna ground down through the feet and lengthen through the crown of the head. So just take a moment here. This is called samastihi or the readiness position. Okay, so are you focused? Are you present not only in your body, but with your mind and breath here as well? And then let's take a deep breath in and reach up towards the sky. Good, and then folding from the waist, we're gonna reach forward and down. And you might need to bend your knees to reach for the floor. See if you can bend until you can touch the floor, okay? On your next inhale, we're gonna step the right leg back and come into a lunge. Now this time, we're trying to keep the knee and the ankle in a straight line, so you might have to wiggle back your back foot a little bit, okay? Take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, step the left leg back to plank position, which is the top of a push-up. We're drawing the core in, really strong here, pressing our hands away into the floor. Good, let's drop our knees down, bend our elbows in towards the body, and slowly land our chin and chest on the floor. Good, from here we're gonna point the toes and hug our legs together. And then see if we can lift up our hands coming into baby cobra. So we're squeezing the shoulder blades, opening up through the collarbone area and chest. And instead of looking up, we're just gonna look down so the back of the neck is really long. Keep breathing. Good, hands down. Bring your feet back to hip distance apart and, and curl up on the toes. And you're gonna come back to that push-up position. But then this time, lift your bum up push back and come into what we call downward facing dog very nice so here you might have bent knees and that's just fine go ahead and bend your knees and we're going to pedal out the feet so we're going to bend one knee and then push the opposite heel down and then just keep going back and forth good so you can feel that opening in the backs of your legs Awesome, just settle both the heels down towards the floor-ish. They might not get there. Drop your chest a little, push out through your finger pads. And on your next inhale, we're gonna try to bring that foot right between our hands. And sometimes when I say try, we get about halfway and then we're just gonna pick up our foot and just bring it all the way because that happens sometimes. And our next exhale, step forward with the left as we fold in. Then we're gonna inhale and ground through the legs as we reach up. And then exhale, hands to heart center. Good, so that was the right side. Let's do the left side now. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward and down. Inhale, left leg back to lunge. Exhale, right leg back to plank pose. Good, let's lower down knees, chin, chest, and then Hug the legs together, lift the hands, baby cobra. Press the hands down, curl the toes, push up position, and then back to downward dog. Let's stay here for three breaths. Don't worry if your timing of the breath wasn't exactly the same as mine. You'll get there, you'll get the hang of it. Just make sure you're breathing. <laughs> Good, let's take the left leg forward and on our next inhale. Exhale, the right leg forward, fold in. Inhale, reaching up to the top. And then exhaling, hands to heart center. Good, are you feeling more warmed up now, Kevin? I'm warm. Yes, and I don't have the heat going, which I need to turn off very shortly. Okay, feet are gonna come to hip distance apart. We are gonna put our weight back into our heels. So this is the proper way to do a squat, and I'm sure you have showed them this before. So we're gonna push our hips back. So from the waist, we're gonna draw the hips back. You're gonna start to feel weight moving into your heels. We're gonna bend the knees and make sure they're going straight forward. And then we're gonna take the hands up in front. So just shoulder height is good. I'm gonna stay here. Awesome, keep holding. Make sure your knees don't knock in or out. This looks great. <sighs> good. So we'll just have a contest. Who can hold it the longest? I know I think I'll lose at this one. <laughs> All right, let's fold forward and down. We'll relax for a second here. And then let's stick the right leg back, back into that lunge, okay? So we're gonna first hold the lunge with our right knee lifted. We're gonna wiggle back our right foot a little bit so we can get really long. We're on the ball of the foot. 
And then I just want you to squeeze your right butt cheek and see what happens. Do you feel that opening in the front? Yeah, so this is your hip flexor or your iliopsoas. We're gonna hold there, take the right hand, keep it down on the floor, and left hand's gonna turn open. Good, keep breathing. Good, remember we're building strength and flexibility and focus in this practice. Good, so this is gonna be a challenge. Bring that left hand down, so you're squaring your hips back to the front, and now we're gonna use our power and come up nice and tall into this higher lunge. The knee is still right over the ankle. We're gonna drop our hips a little bit. Good, let's hold for three, two, one. Now we're gonna shift into warrior. So you're gonna drop your right heel down and just notice you change, so your hips start to change towards facing the long edge of your mat. And I'm gonna wiggle in my foot a little bit so that my knee is in a straight line with my second toe. Bend into that front knee, relax those shoulders down, and hold your warrior. Good, keep breathing. Good. In warrior, we wanna feel like we're ripping apart the mat with our feet, so we're really strong in our thighs. Good, and then straightening that front knee. Okay, don't lock it. So there's a difference between straight and locked. So just kind of find that. Slide your left hand down your thigh and bring that right hand up towards the sky. So we're trying to create a T across our chest, pressing out through that back foot, opening through the whole body here. <laughs> Good, keep breathing. Bend into that front knee now. Take your hands back down, framing your left foot, and then just square your hips back forward. Good job, everybody. Let's step forward now and fold in once again. Now we're gonna come back up in our squat. So we're gonna drop our bum down, weight is in the heels, lift those hands, hold here. Let's hold for five, four, three, two, and let's stand up on one and rest those hands down for a moment. And then just again, maybe close your eyes, take a deep breath in, and full breath out, checking in with how we're feeling. Okay, let's do the other side. Raise those arms up just in front, push your bum back, bend those knees for three, two, one, fold forward, release. Inhale, step that left leg back this time. And then we're gonna hold here and lunge. So squeeze your left buttock, okay? Heart forward, drop the hips. Really feel that opening on the left side. And then left hand's gonna stay down, right hand's gonna reach up. Oh, and sometimes we get a little crack in our backs, like I just did. Good, and then right hand coming down. Stand up tall, reach up. Oh, sometimes you lose your balance. Good, keep holding. This is where we feel the strength of our legs. And even as we're reaching up here, soften your shoulders. Just so try to release any tension around your neck. Good, drop your left heel down, wiggle in your front foot a little bit, and then bend your front knee, warrior two. So we're gonna squeeze those shoulder blades towards one another, drop the shoulders away from the ears, keep holding here. Awesome. And then let's straighten the front knee, gently draw the hand down, left arm up towards the sky. And let's hold for three long breaths. So you're following the breath in and out. In and out. One more. And as you exhale, start to bend that knee and take the hands back down. And then this time we're just gonna come forward. We're not gonna do the squat. We're just gonna relax and forward fold. 
and then slowly you can either lengthen up or roll up whatever is best for your back and feels good for you again turn your palms forward close your eyes this is called tadasan or standing mountain pose and we can just take a moment here to sense and just be good we're going to focus on some balancing now so if your eyes are closed open them up you're going to find somewhere in your room to stare at and lock your gaze there this is going to increase your focus and help you balance a little bit better we're going to start balancing on our left foot so i want you to think of the foot tripod your big toe little toe and heel so maybe you can even spread your toes a little bit and ground down on that left side now even before moving into that left side think about shifting your weight there and just coming up and balancing on your right big toe so that heel the foot's actually still on the floor okay turn the knee out and then just walk that heel in to the ankle so this is one variation of tree pose and you might stay here okay now if you want to you can walk that foot up underneath your knee or above your knee or even up into your inner thigh so you'll just kind of see where works for you and then you can bring your hands either to your heart center or even up or out um, for a variation again fix your gaze on whatever it is that you are staring at try to hug in that left hip if you feel it going out to the left hug it in towards the middle keep breathing Good. all right we're going to go into a little bit more of a challenge we're going to take the right knee forward and then send the foot back and arms forward in something we call warrior three or sometimes we call it balancing stick and we're trying to hold our balance so shift your gaze to something maybe on the floor in front of you lock your eyes there good and then standing back up relax your hands down and again tadasan our mountain pose where we just check in we learn to sense we learn to feel <sighs> All right, let's move into the other side. So remember the foot tripod now on your right foot, big toe, little toe and heel. Come up onto just the big toe of your left side, open up that knee, draw the heel in. And then anywhere again you like on this side where you wanna try that balance, hands can be at your heart, out to your sides, even on your waist if you want. Good. and we're standing really tall finding our drishti that point of concentration that are focusing our eyes on go ahead and keep going awesome and then let's see if we can bring that knee forward and without touching the ground reach forward as you extend your leg back of course if you fall out at any point you just come right back into this challenge good and then let's land it rest those hands down mountain pose once again big breath in and relax okay great job you guys we're going to move into a squat now so not like a squat like we did before but a wider squat where we're bringing our bum as low as we can get okay so you can turn your toes out a little bit i find that helps a little bit you can also roll up your mat and stick it under your heels if you feel your heels come up a lot when you come down so we're gonna again hinge from the waist so you're pushing the hips back first before you even you bend your knees and then you'll bend your knees and slowly sort of wiggle your way down to where you feel comfortable in a squat okay and again if you feel like your ankles start to hurt here you might need to work on that stretch we did for our ankles at the beginning we're going to hold here i like to bring my elbows to the inside of my knees and then my hands 
to prayer, but you can do something like Kevin's doing. You can even reach for the floor. And if you need to, you can be up a little higher. You could even have your back against the wall, your bum against the wall. Good. From here, we're going to try to bring our hands behind us and sitting down carefully. Okay? Good. Soles of the feet are going to come together now. And we're going to try to be sitting onto our sitting bones which can be really, really tough. I know when I first started yoga, I was more seated kind of like this. So you might tuck something underneath your bum so that you're right on those two bony parts uh, of the pelvis, okay? And we're gonna hold on to our feet here. We're gonna lift our chest. For some of us, this might feel like a big enough stretch here. For others, we might start to lean forward and maybe even press into our legs a little bit. So we're stretching into the groin and into these muscles called the adductors. and then we'll gently come back up. And then we're gonna go into the long edge of our mat. And we're gonna open up our legs wide. <laughs> awesome. So here, our legs are really wide and you might bend your knees actually. If you have tight hamstrings and it's hard for you to stretch your legs out flat, you might keep them bent a little bit because we wanna be on our sitting bones again. So you'll just see what works best for you. And then from here, we'll lengthen the spine, great. And then we'll slowly come forward. And you'll just stop when you feel like it's, it's a deep enough stretch for you. Remember, yoga is about being mindful, not, full, not about you know, stretching so much that it hurts or we pull something, we're taking it easy. And then we're just gonna maintain that stretch for a couple more breaths. And when you're ready, slowly walk your way back up. Great, and we're gonna bring our legs back together and you can face the little edge of your mat again. We're going to come into bridge pose. So you're gonna walk your feet hip distance apart in towards you. Soles of the feet are on the floor. And arms are gonna be just alongside the body, okay? We're gonna check that our knees aren't going out wider than our hips and aren't knocking in towards one another. So we wanna find right at the hips, okay? Using your heels especially, we're gonna press into the mat and then squeeze our butt and lift the hips. Good. And you can just keep your hands along the floor. You can even hold the outer edges of your mat and maybe work on tucking your shoulders underneath you a little bit. Good, keep holding. Double check your knees again that they're just going straight forward. Good. Okay, and then slowly come back down, just rolling out vertebrae by vertebrae until your hips reach the floor. Okay, from here, you're gonna cross your right ankle over your left upper thigh, just above your knee. And from here, we're going to reach the right hand between our legs and the left hand around the other side to maybe grab our thigh, or for some of us, our shin. And then we're gonna to try to bring the head back down to the floor and draw the leg in towards us, okay? Something to keep in mind is your right foot, the leg that's crossed over, you can draw your toes in towards your shin. And that might uh, make that uh, outer hip a little tighter, you might feel that. But it's also protecting our knee joint when we do this. And if you are skating a lot, even if you're running, we use our outer uh, glute muscles a lot, that pushing action from skating. Uh, so this is a really good stretch for that. 
Okay, let's switch sides. So let's take that left foot down, right foot down, cross the left, and then again, reach for our thigh and drawing the knee towards our chest-ish. Okay, another good way to do this, if you feel really tight on this side, is you could just put your foot up against a wall, your right foot against a wall, and your arms could even be down by your sides when your foot is against a wall. Good, and then bring the knees now both in towards the chest and hold on to your shins or your knees or behind your knees, whatever works best for you. And we're just gonna rock it out sort of side to side. So we're massaging that lower back. Good, and then let's take our arms wide. So we'll make sort of like a T across our chest or you can even make your arms even a little bit higher, sorry. Yeah, and then we're gonna keep our knees in and then take the knees and just drop them to the right. Now, if you find it's too much to drop them, you might put something underneath them like a yoga block. Your right hand can come to the top of your left knee and then you can just look out over your left shoulder. So you're looking opposite the way your knees are moving. And we're just breathing here, stretching across the chest. Good. And then let's do this to the other side. So let's take the arms wide, knees over to the left. Maybe that left hand can rest on top of the right knee. And then turning the head over to look over that right arm and shoulder. And then from here, we're just gonna take that right hand over to the left side, use it to push ourselves back up. And I'm gonna teach you a breath exercise that really helps us to focus and relax. So we're sitting cross-legged, but you might be sitting on a chair or on a cushion to make it a little bit easier. What we're gonna do is something called three-part breath. So we're gonna to get to understand the power of our breath and lungs in this one, okay? So we're gonna take our hands and we're gonna find our belly button. And then we're just gonna draw a little line with our hands and then rest our hands at that level on our waist, okay? You can close your eyes now and you're gonna think about just breathing in at that level. So you're gonna fill your lower belly with breath. Hopefully feel that movement in your hands in the front and in the back. And just breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Really concentrating on bringing that breath as low as you can. And this is filling up that lower quadrant of your lungs. Often if we're breathing kind of in our day-to-day -day life, we're not taking full deep breaths. You'll definitely notice this if you're doing any sports or activities where you're working really hard. You'll use the full capacity of your breath. So we want to start to use the full capacity of our breath all the time. That's it, one more. Awesome. And then let's now move our hands. So we're gonna take our hands up now to the widest part of our rib cage. So you're gonna lift them up, find that kind of broadest part of your ribs and hold there. Now we're gonna think about breathing into our hands laterally as you inhale and towards the spine or the midline as you exhale. So you'll feel that movement into your hands. So when we breathe, we breathe in all directions the front, the back, and to each side. Here we're really focusing in that side breath. 
Good, feel your rib cage move. And don't just think about filling up the breath, but also think about emptying it all the way. Can you exhale a little bit more and feel those ribs cinch in a bit? One more like this. Good, and then let's go to the last part. Hands on the shoulders, elbows really far back so that you can really open and expand through your chest. And here we're thinking about breathing in the chest, in the clavicle area, the collarbone area, the throat and the upper back. So you can close your eyes again, concentrate your breaths here. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Okay, let's just bring our hands down and close our eyes for a moment. Noticing the three different compartments of your breath. As you come back to a normal breath. And just noticing the effects of the practice. Maybe you're feeling a little more calm, strong and focused. And we sure hope so. So we'll bring our hands to our hearts. We'll close how we usually close in a yoga practice by just bowing in towards our hands and just saying namaste. Namaste. Namaste.